Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, and welcome to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. Today, we will celebrate the memorial of St. Raymond of Peñafort. We begin our celebration. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, let us now acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you gave St. Raymond the gift of compassion in his ministry to sinners. May his prayers free us from the slavery of sin and help us to love and serve you in liberty. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, who indeed is the victor of the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies, and the Spirit is truth. So there are three who testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And the three are one accord. If we accept human testimony, the testimony of God is surely greater. Now, the testimony of God is this, that he has testified on behalf of his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has this testimony within himself. Whoever does not believe God made him a liar. But by not believing the testimony God has given about his Son, and this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. Whoever possesses the Son has life. Whoever does not possess the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you so that you may know that you have eternal life. You who believe in the name of the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of it, he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth. Swiftly runs his world. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Please stand. proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. It happened that there was a man full of leprosy in one of the towns where Jesus was. And when he saw Jesus, he fell prostrate, pleaded with him and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him and said, I do will it be made clean. And the leprosy left him immediately. Then he ordered him not to tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The report about him spread all the more, and great crowds assembled to listen to him and to be cured of their ailments. But he would withdraw to deserted places to pray. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po muli sa ating lahat. Tayo po ngayon ay nasa panahon pa rin ng Epiphany. We are still in the week of Epiphany. In Epiphany, ang kanyang ibig sabihin ay manifestation. Manifestation of whom? Of God to the lives of the people. Ibig sabihin yung pagpaparamdam ng presensya ng Diyos sa buhay ng mga tao. And this was something very important, lalong-lalo na sa panahon ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Alam nyo po, yung mga yung panahon na yon yun yung 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 yun yung generation na sobrang naghihintay sa presensya ng Diyos hinihintay nila yung manifestation ng ating Panginoon ay bakit kasi naramdaman nila ang naisip nila iniwan sila ng Diyos bakit sila iniwan dahil nga sa mga pagkakasalang nagawa nila nakita nila yon naramdaman nila yon hiling nila yung grasya ng Diyos na bawasan o nawala dahil nga sa mga pagkakasalang ginawa nila. And that is why, nagsisi sila, gusto na nilang maramdaman ulit ang presensya ng Diyos. Kaya sobrang naghihintay sila. And that is why the epiphany was something very important, especially during you know, the time of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why, the presence of Jesus Christ was something also very important to the people of that time. Because it tells them that God is already with them. Emmanuel, God with them. Nandyan na ang Diyos. Nandyan na yung hinihintay ninyo. Nagpaparamdam na sa inyo. Paano siya nagparamdam? Paano nagmanifest? Ano yung mga sinyales na nandyan ang Diyos? Ito nga yung isa sa mga manifestation. Healing. Healing. Yung pagpapagaling ng mga may sakit is one of the signs that God is manifesting His presence to the people. Kaya nga, every time that our Lord Jesus Christ cures people of their sickness, whatever sickness that is, yung bulag man yan, yung naleprosy man yan, yung nalumpo man yan, every time he's, He does this, it is an epiphany event. It tells people God is here. Nandito na ang Diyos. Nagpaparamdam na ang Diyos sa inyo. And that is why the healing of our Lord Jesus Christ is something very important to the lives of the people. Because it tells them, hindi sila pinapabayaan ng Diyos. Nandyan ang Diyos sa kanila. Kaya nga, this is a good news to the people. Kaya nga, yung ating antiphone bago yung gospel, ano, Jesus proclaimed the gospel, the good news of the kingdom, and cured every disease among the people. That is the good news. The healing of Jesus Christ is the good news. Not just because nagkaroon ng kagalingan yung katawan ng tao, yung physical self ng tao. But most of all, because it tells to the people that God is with them. God is present in their struggles of their lives. O di ba? Ang ganda ng good news na yun. And that good news is something that is echoed and re-echoed in our time. 
siguro para din tayong mga nasa panahon ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo, no? naghihintay ng ng manifestation ng Diyos, ng epiphany, epiphany. At ano yung epiphany na yun? Na yun? Healing. Lalong-lalo ngayon, kailangan na kailangan natin ng healing. Ayan na naman, tumataas na naman yung kaso ng micro ng ng COVID. Kailan bang matatapos ito? Di ba, yun yung inihiling tinatanong siguro natin ngayon. Kailan ba matitigil ito? Ang sinasabi sa atin ng ating Panginoong Diyos, epiphany is always here. God is always with us. Kaya nga siguro isa sa challenge ng, ng epiphany is asking ourselves, do we always recognize that presence of God in our lives? Paano ba natin nare-recognize yun, yung presensya ng Diyos? Tuwing kailan ba natin nare-recognize yung presensya ng Diyos? Kapag uh, may pangangailangan tayo, tsaka lang natin maalala ay yung Diyos na kailangan ko pala yung Diyos. Oh, every moment of our life. Because I think the epiphany tells us that the manifestation of God is always here with us. The challenge is for us to see it. To see it. Paano? Paano? One of the things that Jesus would always do after healing is to pray. To pray in silence. Kaya siguro para maramdaman talaga natin lagi yung presensya ng Diyos amidst all of these struggles that we have in our lives, all of these ailments, all of these sickness. So always come back to prayer. After fighting all of these illnesses. Epiphany tells us, do not forget to go back to prayer always so that we would recognize that the healing that we seek only comes from God. Only comes from God. Siya lang ang makakapagbigay. O kaya siguro yun yung hamon ng epiphany sa atin. Isa sa hamon. Pangalawang hamon sa tingin ko is this. How do we respond to the presence of God in our lives? You know, after recognizing His presence, maybe through healing, whatever healing that is, healing man ng ating emotions, healing man ng ating minds, healing man ng ating bodies, healing man ng ating mga pockets, whatever healing that is, you know, that we experience, the question is, how do we respond to it? Paano tayo tumugon sa presensya ng Diyos na yon? Kung titignan natin sa kwento ng gospel natin ngayon, palagi ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo, sinasabihan niya yung mga pinapagaling niya. Do not tell this to anyone. Not to tell anyone about this healing. Bakit? Eh magandang balita yun eh. Bakit? Because I think the Lord Jesus Christ You know, rather than publicizing and making a buzz, and making a fuzz about this healing, eh gusto niyang maintindihan ng tao yung kanyang true purpose. And that is the transformation of the life. Yung pagbabago ng buhay. And that has always been the purpose of the healing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya ayaw niyang yung yung trivial ayaw niyang ipagsasabi agad na parang mga chismoso chismoso uy yung ano doon magpapagaling oh napaka trivial and that is not his purpose his real purpose is to change your life after that healing yun yung hinahanap niya and that thing i think that is the right response that we can give to god with His epiphany to our lives. Kasi kung tutusin, tama nga naman, ano? sayang nga din naman. Kung nagkaroon tayo ng healing ng ating mga pockets, halimbawa, nagkaroon tayo ng sinuerte tayo sa ating business, naging successful tayo sa ating mga trabaho, pero naging madamot naman tayo lalo. Sayang yung blessing, ano? Halimbawa, pinagaling tayo sa ating mga sakit. Nawala yung mga sakit natin. Nagdasal tayo sa Birhen ng Manawag at pinagaling tayo. Pero sakit pa rin tayo sa puso ng ating kapwa-tao. 
Sayang. The epiphany, the presence of God, always asks us of a response. And hopefully our response is the transformation of our lives. Siguro kapag ka nagkaroon tayo ng tunay na transformation of our lives, pagbabago ng buhay, pagtalikod sa kasalanan, at pagharap sa presensya ng kabutihan ng Diyos, yung epiphany, hindi na lamang natin mararamdaman as personally. Magiging communal. Na sa pamamagitan ng ating mga buhay ay mararamdaman din ng ating kapwa-tao yung presensya ng Diyos. Kasi gano'n naman yun eh. Yung grasya ng Diyos, it continues to flow. And it, when it flows in our lives, sa pagtanggap natin ito, hindi yan tumitigil sa atin. Hindi yan tumitigil sa atin. It continues to spread, especially to the people around us. Father, paano nila makikita yun? Ay makasalanan ako, ang pangit-pangit ng buhay ko. Paano sila magkakaroon ng epiphany? Paano nila mararamdaman yung healing? sa buhay ko, eh, hindi nga maganda yung example ng buhay ko. Eh, sa tanong na yun, siguro magandang tignan yung truth. Look at that symbol. Look at that image. It's very, you know, it's very beautiful. Pag sinasabi natin, maraming sugat ang buhay ko, paano ako magiging example? Paano ako, mag paano ako magiging, magiging instrument ng healing? And look at the cross. The cross is not an image that is pleasing. Ang daming sugat, ang daming dugo. Ang dumanak sa katawan ng ating Panginoong Yeso Kristo. But what did it do to our lives? It brought us healing by giving us salvation. Kaya mga kapatid, sana ipagpatuloy natin ang presensya ng Diyos, the epiphany of God through our lives by continuously praying, and experiencing His presence and by embracing a transformation of lives, turning away from sin and looking and embracing the goodness of God. Magsitayo po tayong lahat. Like the leper in the gospel who cried out for healing, we now approach our Heavenly Father with confidence that our prayers will be answered in every petition. Let our answer be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may never fail in her duty of welcoming the marginalized and those excluded from society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That scientists and those involved in medical research may discover remedy for incurable diseases. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that our community may reach out with love and care to the rejects and untouchables of our neighborhood. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That families, relatives, and friends may attend to the needs of the sick. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died in Christ may be received with love and mercy into God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now in the silence of our hearts, we offer our personal and our particular intentions. And we also pray for the intentions of this Mass. Almighty Father, help us to follow your example by reaching out to those we ignore. Increase our faith and accept our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Pray, my dear friends, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Lord, as we offer prayers and gifts at your altar, help us imitate the devotion of our brother Raymond to your law of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For us on the festival of St. Raymond of Penaport, Penaport, you bid your church rejoice. So to you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise and without end, we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. For you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Socrates our Bishop, Fidelis, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles, with Saint Dominic, Saint Raymond, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we all dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Pardon. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Son of Mary. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please kneel. We shall be praying the prayer for the elections. I invite everyone to please kneel. Let us pray that the forthcoming elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides the destinies of nations. Let us pray together. Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. From coercion, violence, and terrorism. Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and distortion of truth. Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud. Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language. Deliver us, Lord. Let us pray together. Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us together pray. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others. May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name. And help, and help us grow, grow in holiness forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. Please stand. Please stand. Let us pray. Lord, may this celebration of the Eucharist and the feast of our brother Raymond increase our strength and joy and enable us to come to the fullness of your law of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bago po tayo magtapos ng misa, ako po yung magpapasalamat sa ating lector commentator, sa ating acolytes, sa ating Eucharistic ministers, sa ating uh, solo choir. Maraming salamat po. At sa inyong lahat po na nakiisa sa misang ito, 
Maraming maraming salamat. Ingat po tayo sa ating pag-uwit na wabawin ninyo po ang pagpapala ng ating Panginoong Diyos sa pamamagitan ng ating mahal na ina, ang Birhen ng Santo Rosario ng Manawag. Muli po, maraming maraming salamat. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. We all go in peace. Thanks be to God. We shall now have the prayer for the blessing of the sick and the blessing of our rosaries and other religious articles. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing you give us strength and support in our frailty. <coughs> Turn with kindness towards our brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ and Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may these rosaries, images, candles, oils, and other religious articles, our devotees and pilgrims, be blessed and made holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.